guys, this is our Q&A for bacteriology. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me on Facebook for more videos. Okay, number one, cell walls of gram-positive bacteria contain A. Tychoic acid B. Peptidoglycan C. Lipopolysaccharide or D. A and B The answer here is D. A and B One way we can differentiate bacteria is through their gram-stain reaction and gram-positive bacteria will have on their cell wall tychoic acid and peptidoglycan so, if we know that these substances are present in gram-positive bacteria, what will be found in the gram-negative bacterial cell wall? The answer is peptidoglycan and lipopolysaccharide. All right? Let us remember that um, both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria will contain peptidoglycan on their cell wall, only that it will differ in the amount our gram-positive bacteria will have a thick layer of peptidoglycan while the gram-negative bacteria will have a thinner layer of peptidoglycan. And again, let us remember that aside from peptidoglycan, gram-positive bacteria will have tachoic acid on their cell wall and thus they will retain the primary stain color which is either blue or purple. Gram-negative bacteria, aside from having a thin layer of peptidoglycan, will also have lipopolysaccharide on their cell wall, which makes them uh, lose their primary stain. Again, the answer in this question is D, A and B. Number two, the purpose of iodine in gram staining. A, decolorizer. B, primary stain. C, mordant. Or D, secondary stain. Answer here is C, mordant. Gram staining may be remembered by these very famous uh, initials or mnemonic vias, which stands for crystal violet, which acts as our primary stain and will stain our bacteria blue or purple, either gram positive or gram negative will be stained blue or purple at this stage. Then comes our second reagent in the form of Gram's iodine, which is our mordant. A mordant is a substance that will enhance the reaction between the cell wall and our primary stain. The third reagent stands for acetone alcohol, which acts as our decolorizer. This is said to be the most critical step because it, at this stage, we can now differentiate our gram-positive from our gram-negative bacteria. And as we have explained a while ago, our gram-positive bacteria will retain the primary stain, but our gram-negative bacteria will be decolorized because of large amounts of lipopolysaccharide on their cell wall. The last initial is letter S, which stands for safranin and acts as our secondary stain. And our secondary stain will be taken up by our gram-negative bacteria only, and they will appear pink or red because of this stain. Our gram-positive bacteria will not be stained by the secondary stain because they are already stained by the primary stain, crystal violet. Okay? So to remember one more time, the components of gram staining, we use vias, crystal violet, iodine, acetone alcohol, and safranine. Number two answer is letter C. Number three, which of the following organisms will appear red in gram staining? A. Neisseria B. Staphylococcus C. Bacillus or D. A and C Our answer here is letter A. Neisseria Red in gram staining means that we have a gram-negative bacteria. So as a review, let us remember one more time because of the reagents that we use for the gram staining reaction, gram positive bacteria will appear blue or purple, while gram negative bacteria will appear pink or red. Okay? And there is a general rule, and I will share with you one mnemonic that we use to remember the rule of gram stain reaction. In this picture, you will see the number one rule. All cocci are gram-positive. All bacilli are gram-negative. But as you can see, we have a list of exceptions. 
So to make you remember, those that are gram negative cocci and gram positive bacilli, I suggest that you use this mnemonic. All cocci are gram positive except no boyfriend muna para virgin ka pa because if you're virgin, you'll be negative sa pregnancy test, right? <laughs> So, no boyfriend muna para virgin ka pa will stand for N, Neisseria, B for Branamella, M for Maraxella, and V for Velonella. Branamella and Maraxella refer to the same bacteria. Branamella was the former name of Maraxella. Okay? All bacilli are gram-negative except black men, double L and double C. And those letters stand for... B. Bacillus, L. Lactobacillus, L. Listeria, A. Actinomyces, C. Clostridium, C. Corinibacterium, M. Mycobacterium, E. Erysipelotrix, and N. Nocardia. Of course, this is not a very complete list, but you can use it to have a basic knowledge of the Gram-Stain reaction ruling. Okay? So, going back to our question number three, our answer is letter A, Neisseria, because again, these are cocci, but they will appear gram-negative, red on gram-staining. Number four, in this phase of bacterial growth, cells are noted to divide at a constant rate and are most susceptible to antibiotics. A, lag, B, log, C, plateau, or D, decline. Our answer here is letter B, log. We have four phases to remember for the bacterial growth cycle. The first phase is log followed by log and then we have the plateau and finally we have the decline. So if we are to make a graph there, this will be our log, this will be our log, our plateau, and the decline. What happens in the log phase is this is the period of adjustment. The bacteria adjust to a new environment. In the log phase, this is where they constantly divide and it's said to be the most susceptible to antibiotics. Third phase is plateau, wherein the number of organisms that are living is equal to the number of organisms that are dying. And finally, we have the death phase, which will be characterized as having more number of dead cells compared to the living cells. So again, we have the log, the log, the plateau, and the decline as the phases of our bacterial growth. And number four answer is B, log. Number five, and the final number for this video, microaerophilic organisms need blank of oxygen. A, 21%, B, 10%, C, 85%, or D, 5%. Our answer here is D, 5%. The attachment of the word micro tells you that you need little amount of oxygen. So we have a list here, the number of oxygen needed by certain bacteria. We have those that require 0%, those that require 5%, and those that, re that require 21%. If your bacteria do not need any percent of oxygen, we call them obligate anaerobe. For them to live, there should be no oxygen in the environment, so we call them obligate anaerobe. Those requiring 5% are termed as microaerophilic, saying that they only need a very little amount of oxygen in the environment, 5% for the microaerophilic. And the 21% requirement is for the obligate aerobe organisms. Obligate aerobe organisms. Okay? 0% for the obligate anaerobe, 5% for the microaerophilic, and 21% for the obligate aerobe organisms. Answer here is letter D, 5%. All right, that's it for this video. I hope we understood well and we still are learning and having fun as much as we can. I pray that you will do good on your future exams. And please remember that God always loves you. Bye, guys. See you in the next video. Bye. Bye-bye.